Hi there, Serial Trader here. I'm going to do a weekend update here on the major US indices. And I want to start off with the longer term chart of SPX. And this is the monthly chart, and we're looking back towards the uh, March of 2009 low. And from that low, uh, I think this is the uh, pattern that's unfolding. So we have a one, A, B, C, two, up and three. Now this most recent uh, tricky price action we've had since, let's call it the uh, 2018, for September 2018 peak. I think now it's, it's best labeled as three down in A, three up in B to a new extreme, and now five down in C to finish off a larger expanded flat wave four. Uh, after the reaction we've seen off the, off the March bottom here, I think this is the best way to label it. And of course, this implies that uh, we're now um, starting a new uh, bull market wave up in this larger degree wave five. Uh, and you can see this uh, yellow trend line I've got drawn here. It connects the 2009 low with the lowest point to draw a trend line, which was that October 2011 low. And you can see that here we, uh, we stabbed below it, but we weren't able to close below it here. And uh, so basically, the trend line was tested, but it held, and now we're going back up. So, yeah, I mean, the bear market uh, declaration is no more. Um, I don't think there's ever been a point in the stock market history where you had this much of a reaction off the bottom. Uh, I mean, we're beyond the 76 retracement now, and the NASDAQ composite is making new all-time highs. So it's uh, bear market's canceled, and the bull market has resumed as far as the charts are concerned here, as hard as that may be to believe with what's going on, maybe fundamentally, um, clearly it doesn't matter what's going on fundamentally and you should just follow the charts, uh, which is certainly what technical analysis uh, would always suggest anyways. Follow the price and don't try and make reasons for the price. Uh, okay, so now that we've gotten this out of the way, so we've completed this large expanded flat, which lasted uh, oh, basically a couple of years there. Yeah, so from uh, September, let's see here, from September of 18 to March of 2020. So not, not quite two years, but uh, close to it. Okay, now I think what's more important here, now that we've got the big picture uh, pattern kind of dialed in uh we'll go to the daily chart of spx and what makes this uh so clear at this point is that this five wave sequence is now irrefutable uh you can no longer try and call this a corrective wave this is a clear non-overlapping five wave structure uh likely nearing completion but after it near you know after it completes we will be looking for a buying opportunity in some sort of a corrective pullback, right? Like that. And uh, that should set up a very attractive longer term bullish entry. Uh, but there, there's a couple of ways we can try and play this right now. But uh, first, let me just do a little more analysis. So you can see this is the overall 786 retracement from the all time high to the March low. Not only have we gotten past the 786 retracement, I mean, we basically paused there for a moment and just gapped up over it. So that offered that offered almost no resistance whatsoever. And this previous resistance level we had here at 3136, again, gapped right over that. So yeah, definitely five clean waves off the bottom, which means the trend of one large degree is now up. So quite bullish uh, longer term here. Uh, now, a few things I want to point out. So if we draw the Elliott final channel, so connecting the termination point of wave two, termination point of wave four in parallel off of the wave three extreme up here, you can see that we're getting very close to the upper uh, trend line of this parallel channel. So a natural place for this wave five to terminate. We're getting pretty close to that. Uh, let's say maybe somewhere in the mid 3200s, just visually looking at this. So far, we've gone as high as 32. 11 uh, and also some relationships to point out so we have the reverse fib extension of the wave four 
And the common ones to look for, of course, 1.3, 2, and 2. So we've actually gotten beyond the 2, which lined up quite nicely with that 76. So we've exceeded the common uh, reverse fib extensions. So I'll delete those. Now we have some other fifth wave relationships that I've discussed before, and that's the length of wave one projected off of the termination point of wave four. So basically wave one versus wave five relationship and a common one is equality. And wouldn't you know it, we've actually stopped uh, as of Friday uh, right at that equality relationship. So wave one versus five equality is 32.1179. We went as high as 32. 1172 so within a fraction fraction of a point we've hit that perfect wave one five equality relationship now that would be very impressive if it just stops right there almost perfectly in reverses certainly possible uh, although uh, I suspect it could go just a little bit higher based on the shorter term interday pattern I can get to that uh, later uh, so that's a nice target that we've achieved wave one versus five equality again we're near the top of this Elliott final channel now what's another wave five relationship? So the distance traveled in wave one all through three, okay? So that whole distance projected off of wave four to give you a, a wave five relationship. And a common one for that is the 618. So the distance traveled in wave one through three projected off of the end of wave four, 618 relationship. That would get us up to 32, 38, 17. So a little higher, you know, about, uh, Oh, around 30 points higher than Friday's high, something like that. And again, that lines up pretty nicely visually with the top of this Elliott final channel. So another target within reach, I, I suspect we might get uh, close to that. Although it's certainly possible that we peaked out on Friday as well. Again, it's not that important because once it peaks out fairly soon, uh, the next move of significance will be looking for this, some sort of three wave decline in a wave two. Okay, another thing to look at is the Fibonacci divider. So that's where we take the entire uh, move off the bottom and we look at uh, some ways that the wave four can divide it. So 50%, 382, 618. Let's look at those. So right now we're in between the uh, 382 and 50% Fib divider level. And let me pull that up to a point where wave four would be that 50% fib divider level. And that would get us up to, uh, let's see, about 33 and change, uh, which is actually pretty close to another target that's possible, and that's filling this gap up here. So to fill this gap on the daily chart, and that gap is from the 21st of February, uh, to fill that gap, we'd go up to 33, 28, 45. Uh, which would line up again with this fib divider target where uh, wave four would basically be right at that 50% level of this entire impulse sequence up. Again, we don't have to get there. We've certainly gotten far enough here. This would be a perfectly acceptable place to stop, although I'm just pointing out some higher targets are possible should we keep pushing higher here. Okay, another thing to point out, we are now overbought on the daily RSI. And of course, that doesn't mean uh, that it's the top right now, but it means that we should be looking for a top soon. Uh, so that's another thing I just wanted to mention. Uh, so really the plays here are once we see some sort of reversal signal, uh, potentially try and put on a bearish position to try and catch part of this initial wave A down. That's certainly a potential trade idea. Or just wait for this to all play out, you know, wherever it ends, wait for it to do its correction down. And then when the correction down looks mature, we uh, use this, this wave two down uh, as a longer term bullish entry opportunity. So that's probably the more conservative approach. Don't try and short uh, and pick the top. Just wait for it to play out, wait for it to correct. And then position when there's more of a, a pattern to wrap your head around. Uh, but certainly it's it's a reasonable enough play to try and fade an extreme once there's some sort of sign of a reversal. Again, there's no sign of a reversal yet. Okay. And then of course the next, uh, you know, the next move of significance, once we correct this initial five waves up off the March bottom, we'll be positioning for the, 
you know, the following five waves up in what would likely be a third wave, okay? Again, just looking ahead a little bit to the future there. Uh, and of course, this wave four and five labeling is just a placeholder. It doesn't mean anything where I have them placed, right? Okay, uh, yeah, so that's what I want to go through here on this daily chart. So longer term, uh, certainly a bullish stance is now warranted, but in the more uh, near term, looking for a top and looking for a proportional correction here, right? So keep that in mind. Uh, that's what I wanted to go through there on the wave chart. So on the finger swim candlestick chart, uh, now you can see another thing to point out, we've been gapping up, gapping up. So we have, uh, how many unfilled gaps do we have since we made our bottom there in wave four at, uh, oh, 20, 27.66 was the, the wave four bottom. So we have a, a gap that's gone unfilled. They tried to fill this gap, but this gap's also unfilled. So two, three, so far four unfilled gaps. So being that we're in the fifth wave, we have now four unfilled gaps. We're in the overbought condition. Obviously, uh, filling all those gaps will certainly be a target on the way down once we start reversing. But again, we have to start reversing first. So this, this candle here on Friday, a little bit of an upper shadow, but uh, largely still a bullish candle, certainly not a reversal candle. Uh, I won't go to the weekly candles because they don't really show a whole lot. Obviously, just bullish continuation so far. Um, and again, uh, if we keep going up here without reversing you know, right away, uh, certainly we could target the gap fill at 33.28 or even potentially uh, the all-time high. Sounds crazy, but the NASDAQ composite has already exceeded the all-time high, so it's, it's not that crazy after all. Okay, so that's really what I want to point out there in SPX. Uh, Dow Jones Industrial Average, similar uh, situation. There is potential gap fill target here at 28,892. But again, the Dow has multiple gap ups in the overbought condition, so we're looking for a reversal and a correction down uh, once once it actually stops going up but no evidence yet of that reversal okay so that's the Dow really all the indices are in the same situation at the moment NASDAQ composite uh, now we can no longer even entertain the idea that this is a corrective wave up off the bottom because we've made a new all-time high and we closed pretty strong above that new all-time high certainly no rejection yet okay um, now, the NASDAQ also one, two, three, four, five. I mean, we're, we're clearly in an impulsive move up off the bottom as well. We actually have a golden cross here on the NASDAQ composite. So the 50 day simple crossing above the 200 day simple. So that's a very bullish longer term, uh, signal. So NASDAQ, uh, just a raging bull. But of course, once it, once it completes this initial impulse wave off the bottom, we'll be looking for some sort of a corrective pullback. Hard to believe that the NASDAQ could ever correct at this point, but it will uh, once it uh, once it maxes out here. Okay, that's the NASDAQ. Now on the VIX, the VIX is still just uh, deflating, which is obviously bullish for the overall market. Interesting, the VIX is kind of sitting right around here at the 200 day simple moving average. So we'll see, there might be some sort of a, I mean, obviously when the indices correct, once they finish this kind of a euphoric fifth wave up, you would expect the VIX to have some sort of move up. But of course, we're not expecting at this point anything near what we saw there in uh, in March, right? So the VIX potentially trying to build a base for some sort of move up, which would coincide with uh, a corrective move down in the indices, but no no signs there yet. Okay, and the VIX VIX tool. Uh, this has not produced. A sell signal for quite some time. Uh, again, preconditions keep developing, but then they keep getting extinguished. Currently, we once again have a little divergence between VVIX and VIX. So, VIX made a new low. VVIX so far making higher lows. VVIX trying to get above the red moving average. Of course, you'd then want to see SPX get below the mo blue moving average, which is quite far away right now. It's at 3108. And of course, we're currently uh, close to 3200. So, no signals here yet. Just continuing to watch it. 
Um, but yeah, that's really all I wanted to go through. Um, so bottom line, uh, bigger picture, we should now be viewing this as another uh, bull market. We have five waves off a major bottom. And once these five waves complete, uh, potential shorting opportunity uh, in a corrective wave down or just wait, wait for that correction and position longer term and perhaps more aggressively bullishly for that next impulse wave up. All right. Uh, well, I guess one thing I wanted to go through there, uh, just shorter term, we'll look at the 10 minute chart here uh, on Friday. Uh, so you can see Friday was a gap up. Uh, and then once we hit our intraday peak, 32.11.72, so far that action from the top looks fairly healthy, sideways, corrective. I don't see any five wave down sequence even on this 10 minute chart. So that tells me that once this little sideways corrective action completes, we're likely heading higher again. Uh, and let's just pretend, let's just pretend for a moment that that uh, low and that 10 minute bar, second last 10 minute bar of the day, let's pretend that's the low of this corrective move. And what would we be looking for? If that was the case, we'll do a little reverse fib projection. Uh, more for a day trading kind of objective, but let's see. Let me just uh, get rid of some of these projections. So 1.382 projection gets us to 32.22. The uh, 2.0 projection gets gets us to 32.40. Uh, so those are some little shorter term targets to look for if you want to try and do a bullish day trade. Uh, but yeah, and I think those might line up quite well with some of those other uh, wave five projected targets. I did on that daily chart. So let's see on that SPX daily chart. So yeah, 3238 would be the uh, 618 relationship of wave five versus waves one through three. So that's a nice target. Uh, but yeah, I just want to point that out. So it looks like just based on this shorter term pattern on Friday, a little bit more upside still to complete this sequence. And of course, we have to see some sort of a little five wave decline to even entertain uh, the top being in, right? All right, that's all I wanted to go through there. And uh, it should be an interesting week next week. Certainly looking to top out here in this fifth wave uh, pretty soon, but it hasn't actually happened yet. All right, Serial Trader signing off.